Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Peachy from Marine Science at Wisconsin Connections Academy. Today I'm talking to you about your next portfolio, um, Lesson 8, Marine Pollution of Unit 3. There are two options for this portfolio. Um, I will go through both of them with you. And I will also go through and help you work through a technical glitch that is occurring within the lesson itself. So here I am within the lesson viewer and um, the actual portfolio is mentioned in the next couple of slides. So option one is where you actually will be collecting um, pollution and categorizing it and coming up with you know some of the more common pollutants in your area. We don't live by the ocean <laughs> So obviously you can't take a trip to the shore. However, you may be able to um, find a water source near you. It could be a lake, river, pond, stream, or even some sort of a, um, a drainage pond, like a retention pond that sometimes are found within um, subdivisions or within areas where there's lots of pavement. And what you need to do for this is you need to take with you a trash bag, um, some gloves, camera, and pencil and paper. And you are going to collect the trash that you find within a specific area. Um, designate an area that is, you know, a certain uh, physical dimensions. For example, you know, if you're doing a small beach, you can do the whole beach. If you're doing an area along a drainage ditch, maybe you want to do 100 yards or something like that so that you're not like going outside of that designated area. Um, once you've done that, you're going to basically go through the bag, lay out the trash, categorize it by types of trash, whether it's... Um, it is paper, is it plastic, is it um, metal, you know, um, you can look at other things, organic waste, for example, like rotting banana peel or something like that. You're going to name the trash and then you're going to hypothesize on how you believe that trash got to where it is and what potential damage that trash can cause. Now that last part here where you look at the potential damage, this is something you may need to research. So for example, looking up damage um, that a plastic soda bottle might cause to wildlife. Or if you found like a um, plastic six pack of rings, those plastic rings that hold a six pack of soda, that you may find what damage that could cause to wildlife. Um, the second thing you're gonna do is you're gonna look at a, a second area and you're gonna find other types of pollution. So in this case, you might find a nearby ditch, roadway, um, let's see, marina, parking lot would probably be okay too. And you're gonna look at other types of pollution. Now this might not be chunks of visible, visible trash, but maybe you will notice um, polluted water near the area and kind of hypothesize how that water got polluted, like a puddle of polluted water. Or maybe you'll notice a film of oil across the um, parking lot, um, some other types of, of pollution that you'll find in those areas. Okay, and again, where do you think it came from, the point of origin? Remember there is point source and non-point source pollution. Non-point source pollution, you may have to hypothesize of multiple points of origin. And point and source pollution, you may be able to hypothesize a single place. And then what do you think you could do to limit the pollution in that particular area? Are there measures that could be put into place that would enable you to make sure that the pollution gets reduced? For this one, um, it works well to create a couple of tables. So a couple of charts that you can fill in. You also need to include pictures for this. So make sure you have your camera handy and you take pictures of the trash that you collect um, and include like the category and stuff within there. Okay, so that's option one. It's more hands-on, um, pretty easy, but it does require you to leave your house and get outside and get some stuff done. 
Thankfully, we don't have snow on the ground quite yet. Option two is having you write a letter to your um, local, state, or, or national legislator. And the letter should um, be a specific issue that is affecting marine resources, whether it's um, a specific you know, animal that is threatened or a specific body of water that is threatened or, you know, um, habitats that are threatened, but nothing real general. We don't want to talk about, oh, we need to protect our oceans because they're a beautiful resource and everybody loves watching the whales and, and that kind of thing. It should be specific. And I actually would like you to focus on a local resource. That would probably be the most meaningful to do that. So, for example, if you wanted to focus on the pollution of the Fox River and how we might better clean that up, or maybe you've got an issue in your area with um, um, certain types of game fish that are being threatened by invasive species. So there's a lot of options, but think as local as you can for this. Now, how do you figure out who is your legislator? Well, one of the things that has you do is go to this website, votesmart.org. Unfortunately, when I click on it, it says it's not working. And I believe that the link that they have in there is probably an old link. So what I did is I just Googled um, Vote Smart, and it is right here, the very first link that comes up, Project Vote Smart. And you really want this offices and officials part down below. So when I click on that, that enables me to click on um, state officials. So I can go to Wisconsin. Yeah. And you can also look at, um, you know, local, say, uh, legislators. Okay. And it's going to tell me different districts. It's giving me um, Appleton here, Beloit. It's all by alphabetical. So you kind of look and see who your local legislators are here. Okay. Um, you could look at gubernatorial ones. So ones that affect the statewide. It talks about that as well. Um, talks about state congressmen. Now or Congress people, I should say, but uh, the people who serve in Congress and Senate have a, a vested interest in the state and state issues, but they take it to the federal level. So anything that um, could be passed at a federal level, laws and such, that would impact us statewide, that would be something you'd want to address to a congressperson or a Senate senator. Um, Anything that's like a state law would have to be addressed to a state representative, gubernatorial, and anything that's more of a local kind of ordinance and local laws within your community, you want to take it to the local level. And oftentimes taking it to the local level will feed um, further upwards if it's not within their, their jurisdiction. Okay, so that's where you're going to want to go to get the information. Um, after the letter has been graded, you can then send that to your local legislator. If you want to, you are not required to. But remember that I'm looking for things to be specific. Um, citing research is an excellent means to make it specific. So statistics, um, looking at how this particular problem impacts not just the environment um, and the, the ecosystem, but also the citizens of the community make it personal. So you could do something to the effect of how is this impacting local businesses? How is this impacting Wisconsin state tourism? So there's many different avenues, but oftentimes people need it to speak to their wallets to make it something that they care about. So you can um, look at how does this affect the local economy? That's something that they might have a more of a, um, you know, they may be more inclined to be concerned with something that has an impact on the economy as well. So look at it from many perspectives, from the environmental perspective, from the economic perspective, from maybe even local uh, recreational perspective. So there's lots of ways to look at the problem that you may find within your own community.
All right, so those are your two options for this particular portfolio. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to call me at extension 2204 or you can send me a webmail message. Thank you.